hello good day friends uh, i hope you're having a great day all of you and i'm here back as i promised in my previous video to make another video in english regarding mixed marriage in morocco i understand that many of you don't speak arabic and for this reason i decided to make this video again to shed some light on some uh, so, some details about getting married in Morocco if you don't have Moroccan citizenship. Mixed marriage is for anybody who doesn't have Moroccan citizenship and wants to marry a Moroccan citizen. So a Moroccan lady wants to marry non-Moroccan man or a Moroccan man wants to marry non-Moroccan lady, so same. Uh, this mixed marriage in Morocco is somehow complicated and the authorities in Morocco ask for so many documents and so many proofs to actually register this marriage and approve it. You have to obtain an authorization to marry and after you obtain this authorization to marry, you can go see what they call them adul. Adul uh, are the government people they're, they're hired by government they have certain certifications and they are they are able to write and attest and register all kind of contracts and agreements including the marriage contract and agreement i my name is Qasim. sorry i didn't introduce myself i am a canadian citizen living in canada in halifax and my wife is moroccan citizen currently in morocco in Suera. Suera is about eight hours away from Rabat, south of Rabat. And when uh, we decided to get married, my wife now was my fiance at that time. She went to the court or to the civilian court or like to the family matters court and obtained a list of all the documents required by the court in order for us to get approved. And I collected all these documents to the best of my ability and I went to Morocco to get married. One of the documents required is a non embedent for marriage. This is a certificate that shows that there is no issues for me being married, that I'm not currently married because it's against the law in Canada to marry more than one person. In many Arabic countries or uh, according to the Islamic law, it's allowed to marry for women. In Canada, it's strictly prohibited to marry more than one person. So this letter is to show that I am currently not married and I'm able to marry. So I obtained this letter from the Canadian Embassy in Rabat and they also issued a citizenship letter for me which was just an addition. It's very easy to prove my citizenship. If I carry a passport from Canada, that's a proof of my citizenship. Anyway, and I took those two certificates to the Ministry of Foreign to attest them. In many cities in Morocco, it's not needed for these two certificates to be attested, but it's according to the, to the judge, to ask for anything he or she wants, anything. Even if they give you a paper with all the documents required, on the day when you apply, they might ask you for different things and other things that they're not stated on the document and they're not required. They're allowed to do that. They can ask for anything they see. So my advice, rather than not knowing if those documents have to be attested or no, so my advice, since you are in Rabat, most of the embassies are in Rabat. So if you go to Rabat to obtain this uh, no issues to marriage from Rabat, whether from the Canadian embassy, the American, the Australian, the Swiss, the Swiss, any embassy, go to the Ministry of Foreign. There are two offices. There is one office for Moroccan citizens and there is one office for foreigners. So go to that office and have those documents attested. That doesn't take more than five minutes. I was there for five minutes maximum. It was very quick. They attested the documents, stamped them, and I left, and it's a free of charge. The Moroccan authorities and offices, they really like it when the documents have stamps. Even if those stamps are not required, but they feel somehow that stamps give more value to the documents and give it more authentication. So they like those stamps. 
So if any time, anywhere, you ask if this document has to be attested or certified or, 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 the answer will be yes, even if it's no. So my advice, don't ask for anything that is not required or they didn't ask you. If they tell you bring a photocopy of this, bring a photocopy, period. If you ask them should I attest it or certify it, they will tell you yes, even if it's not required. And this will cause a lot more delay for you. People and employees in the offices in Morocco, they're not very knowledgeable. I found myself knowing way more than some of them about the procedures and about the timings and about everything. So I stopped asking any one of them because every time I ask, I get wrong answer and disappointing answer that is way off the truth. When I went to Morocco and I collected all the documents, uh, the judge, the, the family, the family matter judge, has to initial the, the file that it's accepted and I'm able now to apply. And once I did that, they asked me to go and photocopy the whole file, every single paper in the file, to photocopy the whole thing four times and attest them, have them certified. So I did that, I had them certified. This caused me like a delay, a day or two extra delay. So if you're able to do this before, you submit the file, you have to, to know that your documents are complete 100%. Or you can do like me, just go and apply and once they initial it that everything is complete, they will ask you to go now have four copies, which is not a problem. You can do this in any city, any small city. You just go to the area where they issue some like uh, uh, birth certificates or uh, any simple documents and they will be able to attest it. They just look at the original and put the stamp and stamp in and charge you some fees. So it's everything it's about about the fees. And once I did this, uh, if I took the file by myself and I went to all the offices that required some processing and I did this by myself, the whole file would have been completed in a day or two. But I had to give it to some offices and wait for their answer and they had to send it internally between some other offices and this caused me more delay. Some of the employees actually asked me for money, like straight ahead, like straight, you know, give me some money so I can do this for you. Even though I paid all the fees required, you have to pay the fees when you, when you submit it at the, at the court and I did, but those people ask for this. There is a little bit of corruption. And I expected that if you don't want to pay any money to anybody, you can do that, but you have to expect a lot of delays. If somebody asks you for money and you choose not to give them money, you expect rather than spending a day there, your file is going to be there for several days. So if you have the time and you don't want to pay, good luck, you know, in this way. But if you are in hurry, as I was, you have to be a little bit anyway so some people but in the other hand there are some other people they're really really good you know they give they take the file they do whatever they want to do with this file and they give it to you one of one of the offices i i spent there five minutes after five minutes the manager came and he was like a wonderful man he gave it to one of the employees said you know write the paper and he gave it to us and he stamped the page and he said you're done and I assume that's what was required in all the offices rather than five minutes. It took me a week to finish this, this file. And now even when I say a week, so many people will say, oh my God, this is like way too fast. Because most people spend a month or three weeks or like six weeks doing this because number one, their documents were not complete. They didn't understand the procedures. They didn't know how things go in Morocco. And they kept going back and forth, back and forth between the court and the offices, trying to get everything in order. But once you have everything in order, you shouldn't take more than a week. Uh, I said before, don't ask about things that are not required because I found myself anytime I was asking about anything, I was causing myself trouble and delays. And 
just to mention everything I said in this video is about my own personal experience don't take it as a general rule because it's not every city has different rule every court has different rule I told you every judge can ask you for anything they like because they see it right so they just, they just ask you for it so whatever I tell you take it as a general guideline but before you do anything obtain information from the source you want to know information about the court go to the court and ask them and get the papers even though I tell you sometimes it's not all the information but at least they tell you you know once you go to the court they tell you what they want don't just listen to people assuming that's everything you need and then you go to the court and then they ask you for something else anytime you need information obtain it from the source of information or where you're going to deal with that information and that's in general what happened and how uh, mixed marriage in Morocco I can't uh, state all the details and the aspects of this in this short video for this uh, feel free to leave me any question any comment about anything send me your questions message me I welcome it and I'm happy to chat and answer any questions you have I also was in Morocco just a couple weeks ago to visit my wife and uh, I enjoyed my time Morocco is actually a very beautiful country it's uh, one of the best or I can say the best Arabic country I have seen I've seen many of them and it's even like better than many of the European countries and, and North America w one example the train stations train stations in Morocco are the best are much better than all European train stations 5 million times better than Canadian train stations and American train stations they're wonderful so there are so many good things in Morocco there are some things have room for improvement uh, some of the people still used to the old mentality and the old things used to happen so we just hope that things uh, improved and get better in in Morocco uh, they have a rule that uh, about the currency in Morocco that it's a closed currency closed currency means you're not able to buy it outside of Morocco this is true it is a closed currency but you still can buy it it's cheaper if you buy it in Morocco this is the first time out of like I visited 20 countries and every time I visit any country I buy the currency before I go to the country and it's always cheaper when I buy it from Canada before I go this is the first time I find it that it's cheaper to buy it in Morocco rather than buying it outside because it's a closed currency so people still are willing all the currency exchange places they'll give it to you but it's more expensive because it's not widely available so buy it in, in Morocco that's easier for you don't buy it from the exchange places you find at the airport or you find randomly in tourism area because they will charge you a very high convert rate just buy it from the banks the banks are the cheapest there is one called Barid Bank Barid Bank is like the mail office and the bank they have uh, it's, its collaboration together this was this had the best uh, conversion rate uh, first time I went to Morocco uh, it was in December and because of coronavirus tourism was not allowed so they said you know you can't be here for tourism unless you have an essential reason so I told them I'm here to marry my fiance and they said well in this case your fiance had to send you a letter of invitation like invitation letter stating that you're coming here to marry her where is this letter and that was my first time ever hearing anything about a letter like this I didn't even know that a letter like this existed so I uh, gave them uh, what they call a fed of it when I went to the Canadian embassy to get the letter of uh, no issues to marriage the Canadian embassy required me to write all the information on a paper and go see a notary public and have it attested notarized so I have all this notarized to give to the Canadian embassy so I showed them this at the airport and they were nice enough to accept it and, and let me go uh, I had to get a corona test in Canada before I go because you have to have a negative results 
for a sample was taken no more than 72 hours before arriving Morocco and now Canada has the same rule that I have to get tested before arriving Canada at least 72 hours and this test is very expensive tests are usually free for citizens that's if you have symptoms or if you think you have a virus you go take a test but if you need a letter showing that you don't have coronavirus they know that you're gonna use this for travel reasons and this uh, this letter you have to pay for it it's it's very expensive recently canada just yesterday or the day before announced that in the next couple of weeks they will remove the three day hotel quarantine and the 14 days self isolation for people who had their vaccinations for people who are fully vaccinated means got their two doses of vaccine and have a negative results of coronavirus so as of uh, as of july 5th if you enter canada and you have two doses of approved vaccine in canada there are four kinds of approved vaccine in canada which is Pfizer, moderna AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. Canada approved these four, so if you have two doses from any of those and a negative results for coronavirus, you don't have to go three days into hotel and have 14 days self-isolation. Unfortunately, many of these uh, vaccines are not available in Morocco. There are different vaccines in Morocco so far the canadian government did not accept them and in my opinion i think this is politics because all the vaccines are the same but it's political reason that the chinese vaccine because it's china they're not accepted in canada because they're not fully tested or united states did not give the authorization to the world to take this vaccine even though it's it's the same so anyway it, this is a politics political reason just to make it easier for you just plan ahead if you know you didn't have any of these four vaccines that you are not going to go to a hotel and have 14 days self-isolation this could change later at some point and even like the rules in morocco change change as well so my friends uh, that brings us to the end of the video i know that was very quick i said everything very quick as i said i am happy to answer any questions to reply to any comments Feel free to leave me your comments, send me your questions, and I will be happy to answer them. I made one video before this, and I promised in that video to make one in English. That video was in Arabic for uh, my friends uh, who don't uh, understand English or who prefers the Arabic language. I do speak Arabic fluently, and I do speak English, obviously. And after this video, I'm going to make another one about sponsorship. I have a lot of knowledge in sponsorship applications and in procedures with Immigration Canada in general. So I'm going to post another video talking about sponsorship and uh, some details about uh, permanent resident applications and how you, what you do, you know, while the time wait for the approval of your application. Have a great day and all the best for all of you.